This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. This series is elite. The best in the world. Intense. Base and competitive. You wanted the best, you got a for a rest. 25,000 on the line, everything changes. Often imitated, never duplicated. Some of the best competitors of iRacing. Can't wait to go out there and put on a show. The greatest show on dirt. The world of outlaws. <laughs> put on an amazing show of racing in the season opener and after four weeks we come back to Volusia Speedway Park and Alex Bergeron impress his new sponsor of CSI Shock or will it be someone else who can finally upset the momentum of the most dominant driver we've seen in these Dirt World Championships thus far. The fifth round of the 2019 World of Outlaws Not Sunday Drink Sprint Car Championship Series stops in at Volusia Speedway Park. Do not go away. Live pictures coming shortly. Human horsepower, NOS energy drink, high performance energy. fans you wanted the best you've got them live on dirtvision.com presented by dry d the world of outlaws nos energy drink sprint cars the world of outlaws morton buildings late models knoxville raceway and the knoxville nationals and the dirt car summer nationals are all available live 
Sprint Car and Lead Model Fast Passes are available now for just $39 a month with single event subscriptions available as well. From Volusia to Charlotte, Fairbury to Lernerville, Eldora to Macon, and everywhere in between. Dirt Vision has you covered all season long, every race, live, anywhere, anytime. Don't be left in the dust. Sign up for Dirt Vision today. Not Energy Drink Sprint Car Championship Series comes back here to Florida at the Volusia Speedway Park, arguably the home of World of Outlaws, certainly the home track for the series. Chase, we saw some fantastic racing here just a little bit over a month back, and I think we're going to be in for another fantastic show once again because we've really not had a bad night of racing through the first four rounds. Yeah, absolutely. We've had very little cautions throughout all of the races so far this year. And, and like you said, this place put on a great show, not really for the win, but for second place. It was an absolute dogfight that first week back. Uh, Alex Bergeron obviously picked up the win that night. He was the only driver, really, that was able to work the top of this racetrack to uh, perfection here tonight. So we'll see if a couple of these guys went back to the drawing board for this racetrack and maybe set their cars up for the top of the, of the speedway here tonight. I'm really excited to see how it'll play out. There's the point standings on the uh, screen now. Alex Bergeron leads not by too much, though, over James Edens, David Heilman, Joel Berkeley, and Nick Cooper right, uh, right now your top five. We say it's not by too much, but really the story, the story of this championship is those drivers second, third, and fourth. They've be, they're having what would ordinarily be championship style runs, Chase. But because Alex just keeps winning, they you know they keep getting top fives. I think all of them have finished in the top five at least three out of the four races, if not a couple of them, maybe four for four. And the problem for all of them is that Alex just keeps finishing in front of them, and even though they finish really good, they just lose ground week on week on week. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, Alex Bergeron with three wins and a second so far this year. He's been almost un, un, undefeated. So, um, I mean, but here's the thing, though, Randy, is you got to think about it, that um, every championship guy that's ever had won a championship, there's always been that one night that something goes wrong, whether he blows an engine, he crashes, he doesn't make it to the feature event. Something has to go wrong for that kid, and everybody's waiting for it to happen so they can maybe gain some points back on him. But so far, man, it seems like he's almost untouchable. We saw it last year in the USAC uh, National Series. The championship came down to the final race, nearly the final round out at Paris Auto Speedway. Uh, qualifying currently underway right now, and it's not out of the realm of possibilities as that comes down here once again. We take a look at our track information. Just a little bit under a half-mile trip here in Barberville, Florida, and it's a relatively cool day tonight, Chase. 75-degree Fahrenheit air and track temperature partly cloudy. That should make for a very nice attacky racetrack for these guys. As qualifying continues its way, uh, we haven't seen any of the championship contenders really put in time. Bergeron yet to hit the circuit. Yeah, James Eden's second in points right now. Just turned his lap 13, 7, 9, 8. That's second so far out of about 10 drivers. Austin Selman's got the best time so far at a 13, 7, 7, 9. And remember, this is the uh, most important part of the night, in my opinion. This is what sets you up for a good starting spot in the heat race and, and also gets you some bonus points if you're able to qualify in those top six spots. Yeah, always a great thing here. As we take a look at some of the cars that are out there on track, I believe that's the four of Wayne Williams currently hitting the circuit. He's going to work through corners number three and four slides way up the racetrack. Not sure if that's going to be the quick way through on his second lap, and indeed it's not. Nearly a full tenth off he's able to do on his opening lap. So not an improvement for him. Still a handful of drivers we need to see actually start some hot laps. Nelson Webster in the 15. He's getting at it for it, as well as Chase Cabray in the 39. Yeah, Dylan Hauser just turned the fastest lap now, 13.709 in car number two. But you mentioned that. You watch Wayne Williams right there coming off turn four. Man, that turn four wall will sneak up on you in a hurry. Don't be surprised tonight if you see some of these guys maybe bounce that right rear tire off the front straightaway wall off turn number four right there because, man, this place really narrows up quickly off that fourth corner. It really does. Championship points leader, the 12 of Alex Bergeron. He's out on circuit right now, and he's heading in towards three and four to begin his first hot lap. 40 seconds left in the qualifying session, and let's see what the points leader can do as he's on the clock up top through corners number one and two. Seems like a lot of people liking that high line. Yeah, the high line, definitely the place to be right now so far in qualifying. Goes back to the top in three and four right here. We'll see what the 12 car can do. And the first lap by is second quick, not quick time, 13.717. He's got to pick up about eight uh, hundredths of a second to get up there to Dylan Hauser, but still a good lap nonetheless for Alex Bergeron. Now tries the bottom down here in three and four. Interesting strategy, just trying to see what it can do for him. Second time by is going to be 
slower, but yeah, you got a new quick timer, and it's Tim Ryan. 13.703, Tim Ryan, your fast time qualifier tonight. He's been struggling all season long, and I think the Australian and our defending series champion is trying to finally put something together as Tim Ryan in the closing seconds of qualifying nips Dylan Hauser by six thousandths of a second on his hot lap. So Tim Ryan will take quick time tonight, and he will be on pole position for that opening heat race. And, well, let's go down the starting grid for that opening heat race right now. Row number one is going to be Tim Ryan and Lewis Hewitt, so it's going to be an all-Aussie front row with Logan Clampett and Nelson Webster on row number two. Matt McKinney and Blade Witt on that third row with Robert Kerstetter and Joe Quinn tagging the back of this four car, or excuse me this eight car field and tim ryan finally getting himself up to form here chase we've been waiting for him to do this and well, is this going to be where he puts on the run where he somehow makes the championship contending season out of this uh i think it might be a little bit too late there for ryan as this marks the halfway point tonight here throughout the season i think ryan could possibly get back into the top 10 i think he comes into night 14 in the point standings but, I mean, we thought last week when he had a good qualifying run at Eldora that things were going to start to turn around, but still, something would always happen. Tim was involved in at least one accident in the feature event last week at Eldora, so um, a good qualifying effort doesn't always mean, you know, success throughout the night. Talking about qualifying here with Alex only going third quick, that's going to be a relief to some of these guys uh, that have been struggling a little bit with the overall pace and the championship contenders. So if you're David Heileman, if you're, if you're a James Edens, if you're one of those drivers that have been really pushing, trying to keep things uh, close and keep Alex on it. Seeing him not take away full point potential here tonight with only a third quickest qualifying as opposed to putting it on pole, which is a points difference, that's going to potentially be very relevant. And what's also huge about that is uh, Bergeron. I know we're going to be talking about him quite a bit tonight as well as the rest of the season. Obviously, he's the point leader, but Bergeron, with that third place qualifying effort, he will automatically, at least if he wins the heat race, he will automatically start on the second row. So um, it's going to be a little bit tougher. He's going to have to do a little bit of work here tonight, Randy, to win this race or finish on the podium. And he'll start in the third spot if he wins his heat race. So um, I'm excited to see uh, who's, who's going to win these first two heats and start on the pole tonight's main event. Quick rundown of the event format, if you are unaware. Four heat races, the top four from each heat transfer directly to the main event. We then have twin last chance qualifiers, twin B mains, the top two from each of those transfers to the event. And then the 20 best drivers will duke it out for 30 laps here around Volusia. Pace truck takes them for their first observation lap. And now it's going to be interesting to see, Chase, is what this racetrack does. We saw everyone pretty much up along the cushion and qualifying, but we've seen the tracks really change just even over the opening couple heat races thus far this season. Lima Land really being the big example of that. Yeah, absolutely. We've had some great heat races so far this season. Uh, every single week, it seems like there's been a great heat race. And remember last week at Eldora, we had one where the guys finished literally a dead tie. It was point zero zero zero. Uh, Adam Elby picked up the heat race win there over, I think it was Cole Cabray in one of the most incredible races we've seen all season long. And man, that thing went viral all over Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It was it was a wild video. Definitely was. As the iRacing pace truck peels down on towards pit road, the 98 of Tim Ryan is going to get on it. We are green and racing here at Volusia Speedway Park. In towards one and two, the 98 has a big gap. The 44 Logan Clampett tries to slide his teammate to Lewis Hewitt. Will swap plays and get up to the top side of the racetrack, but Lewis is going to throw it right back on him in towards turn three. Yeah, Lewis Hewitt already off to a good start. Last week had his best finish of the season with a second place run at the Eldora Speedway. And right now slots himself in the second early on in this heat race. Right now, Logan Clampett. This will be his first time transferring straight from the, fe or the heat race to the feature event. If he could pull this off, running in the third spot and fourth right now, held down by the 15 car of Nelson Webster. Nelson keeping that 44 on us. And you see they're about a car width off the wall, but everyone pretty much up around the top groove of the racetrack. No one running the middle of the bottom. I take that back. Leaving maybe Joe Quinn in the background. No, Robert Kerstetter tried the bottom through three and four on Joe Quinn. Wasn't able to make that stick. Whole field pretty much single filed off as we're halfway through heat one. Yeah, everybody up on the top of the racetrack right now. This is, we did not see this at all last, uh, last time we were here during the feature event. We had most of the field on the bottom with Alex Bergeron and, and a couple of other guys working the top side. Obviously, we still have a long ways to go on this track surface, so things will change as we progress on through the night. But right now, it's a big old choo-choo train on the top side of the racetrack. Definitely is. It definitely seems like the entry to the corner is a lot slicker than we saw in the early phases of the night. Last time we were here at Volusia, two to go for the drivers as they come off turn number four. It's about a seven tenth of a second advantage for Tim Ryan over the rest of the field, over the closest competitor. And Lewis Hewitt actually brought that gap down 
just a little bit, but that's just as I say that, a little loose off the top with Lewis. Tim's are gonna actually roll the middle through three and four and run sort of the slider line up to the top of the cushion. So maybe experimenting a little bit is the defending champion. Lewis Hewitt is building an advantage because of that and has brought that gap down a couple of tenths, but I don't think it's going to matter for this heat race as they come off of turns number three and four. The 98 of Tim Ryan, he'll pick up a heat race victory in 2019 with Lewis Hewitt in second, Logan Clampett and Nelson Webster rounding out the top four. I think Tim Ryan and Logan Clampett are going to be the happiest campers out of heat race number one. Yeah, Tim Ryan, that will automatically set him up on the pole for tonight's main event with how this format works. So that's huge right there. If you win heat race number one, a good run there for Lewis Hewitt. He was actually turning better lap times than Tim Ryan there towards the end of that one. Logan Clampett was third. Nelson Webster, Blade Whip, Matt McKinney, Robert Kersetter, and Joe Quinn will head off to the B main. Those guys fifth through eighth. And, uh, man, if I'm the rest of these guys in these other heat races, if I'm starting up front, I'm pumped. If I'm at the back, I'm a little bit worried right now. Yeah, I definitely am after watching the fact that that track was – pretty much everyone up along the outside groove. It seems like it's, you're really only going to have the opening lap or so to maybe make some passes. Then after that, you're pretty much going to be single filed out. Let's take a peek at heat race number two, and it's going to be your second quick time here tonight in Dylan Hauser, TTL car. He will start on that front row with Lewis Hewitt on the outside of him. Uh, excuse me, with Austin Selman on the outside of him. Alex Smolders and Vinny Sansone on that second row with Ryan Mayer and Nick Cooper on row number three with Britton Roxbury and Joel Berkeley on row at number four as our graphics seem to be freaking out just a little bit. But the field's rolling off regardless. And Dylan Hauser, very good uh, qualifying result for him, especially for him being someone who's usually identified Chase as a bit of a late model specialist. Good to see him showing some good pace, which he has done all season actually in this wing car. Yeah, Dylan House has been pretty solid all season long, had his best run uh, actually here the last time we were here, fifth place run. Uh, the last time we were at Volusia, he had a 10th place run last week at Eldora, so uh, Hauser's had some pretty solid runs so far this year, and like you said, he's a big time late model guy, but um, you know, here on iRacing, uh, these drivers can be pretty good at just about everything. We talk about Logan Clanton quite a bit, he's a, a guy that runs on the pavement, he runs the Rallycross series, he runs here on the World of Outlaws series as well, so um, that's a bit the beauty about this iRacing service, man, you can be pretty good at just about everything if you uh, put enough practice laps in. Yeah, you really can, there's a handful of drivers that have really really conquered all the different types of racing we have on the sim we do have a few of them that run in this series a couple of the drivers to watch starting a little bit deep joel berkeley nick cooper Britton rockberry six seventh and eighth there's a couple championship contending drivers in there and they've all shown good pace at points of this year of this season the nine of joel berkeley gonna be the one to watch coming from last can he somehow lock up a transfer spot with his single groove as a track scene through that first heat race dylan hauser in command of the field he's gonna wait he's gonna wait he's gonna wait he checks the whole field up a little bit late but he eventually gets on it as they scream into one yeah look at that too oh car in the inside wall that was the 211 of britain roxbury he, or excuse me, that was the 211 of Alex Smolers make that. He bounced off the inside wall to the 360, kept on going, but there's got to be some damage to that car and not the way he wanted to start this one out. I am amazed that he didn't collect anyone after that little bit of a spin. He sort of just shot the gap and went between the two rows of cars. That's going to allow Joe Berkeley, though. He's up a number of spots already into feed number five. He started in eighth place, so that nine car definitely has speed. As Selman is going to roll the bottom, I believe we're going to see Nick Cooper roll the bottom as well. So in heat race number two, drivers starting to fan out to different grooves on, on the racetrack. Yeah, here we go. Now the, the grooves start to get moved around a little bit. Oh, Cooper a little bit sideways in the slick right here. Here comes the nine car. Joel Berkeley to his outside. Berkeley, I don't know if we mentioned or not there, Randy, but he actually ran second here the last time we were at Volusia Speedway Park, so the nine car is definitely one to watch for as far as getting a win here tonight, but he's definitely got to uh, gain a couple more spots if he wants to make that a little bit easier on himself here. We're halfway through the second heat race, and the fight for the transfer spot is really the one to watch. Cooper running the bottom, Berkeley running the top side. They are teammates, so they're probably not going to play too aggressively with one another. But you know Berkeley wants to get through directly into the feature with his situation in the championship. Vinny Sansone has also backed up to this fight as well as the 18 of Austin Selman. This has become a four-car scrap for second, third, fourth, and fifth on the racetrack. And Bert, Britton Roxbury not far back as well, uh, also with a lap and a half to go. Yeah, Berkeley's really just trying to figure out where he needs to go right here. These guys are all over the place in front of him, and he's just trying to find a line to go to make it past one of them. He's only got to get by one more driver to transfer in as they're side by side in front of him. Nick Cooper and Vinny Sansone were on the last lap here. The final or a couple four or more spots of the feature event up for grabs. Oh, Austin Selman nearly gets ran in the back to of by the 35 of Cooper, and it looks like Cooper's going to hang on to the final transfer spot with Vinny Sansone third, Austin Selman second. And then your winner was the two-car of Dylan Hauser that rounds out the field there.
And so, man, that was that was starting to get interesting there. With a couple more laps to go, I think we might have had a different guy uh, transfer on there with uh, Joel Berkeley. I think you're right. Track is definitely starting to form up. Quick look at your full race results. Hauser, Selman, Sansone, and Cooper, they take the transfer spots. Joel Berkeley, he's going to be frustrated, I think, having to come in through one of the LCQs. Britton Roxbury is going to have to do the same. He finishes sixth with Ryan Mayer and Alex Smolders rounding out the eight-car field. Heat race number three, though, Chase, and this is going to be the one that's exciting to watch with our champ couple more championship contending cars in Bergeron and Heilemann. Why don't you take us down starting, uh, starting grid? Yeah, on the pole, this one, it is the championship points leader, Alex Bergeron. And uh, to his outside, how about a good qualifying effort for the 131 of Bobby Sant Jr.? Uh, starting on the outside of the front row. Row number two is going to be the 71 of Cole Cabray. And to his outside, the 23 crew has had a great uh, season so far. That's Justin Thomas. Third row on the inside, the 57 of Anthony Lopresto. And on the outside of him in car number five, that's Braden Eiler. Fourth and final row, how about this guy up there in the championship standings? The 49 of David Heileman came into the night. I think he's fourth in the point standings, so he's got a long ways to go in this one. And then the 75 of Jesse Dacus will round out the field here for heat race number three. Coming into this one, David Heilman actually third in the points. And that's actually really inter interesting to me, Chase, that we have two back-to-back -back heat races like this where one of the drivers on that back row, we had Joe Berkeley fourth in the points. He started on the, in, the la in dead last. David Heilman second to last, third in the points coming into this. Uh, we saw Joel not able to pick that transfer spot up, but I'm curious of what that Napa Casey Kane racing team, uh, number 49, maybe can make of it uh, with heat race number three. Yeah, Heilman, I told him last week in his interview after Eldora Speedway that he's one of my favorite drivers that we have out here in this field because he doesn't settle, man. If he's running third, if he's running second, he doesn't care about that extra money that it gets. He wants to win these races so badly as he wants to, you know, be up there in that championship hunt. So watch for Heilman here. He's going to be making some moves here. I don't think he's going to be faking any moves. He's definitely going to be trying to get up on the wheel here and get by a couple of these guys to transfer straight onto the main event. Be interesting to see as well what some of these drivers who qualified and are starting near that 12 car can do. Can they keep the 12 machine of Alex Bergeron honest this trip around the racetrack? Anthony Lopresto getting a little bit creative with that bottom line will eventually form it back up. But the 12 going to be in command of the field here. When is he going to go? He traditionally goes early, but he's been known to check him up, and he's exactly what he's going to do this time. Green flag flies, and the 49 of Heilman, he wants to take advantage of the checkup. He's going to slide the bottom and try to make it up on two cars early. Lopresto slides nearly up into Justin Thomas, who tags the wall down the back straightaway. Yeah, not a good start there for Justin Thomas, but the 49 of David Heilman is one spot out of a transfer already. Contact behind him. As those guys get together, Alex Bergeron shows away, but Cole Capre with a big slider up there for the lead. Bergeron turns it back underneath them. A good battle going on at the front of the field as Bergeron slides himself to 71. Capre's got a big run down the front straightaway. They are going at it for the lead right now. Top three all fighting for the lead. Bergeron, Cabre, and Sant Jr. They're going to single file out and stretch out a little bit. The transfer position spot fight is on is there as well between Lopresto, Heilman, and Eiler. Right now it's Heilman who holds that fourth position in towards one and two. Bergeron will run the bottom and will not slide up the racetrack. Cole might be able to get a run here and make something of it, but your top two still very, very tight. Your championship points leader does not look too comfortable up front right now. The 71 of Cole Cabre is all over him. They both go to the bottom. Bergeron gets the inside wall right there. The 71's into him. Bergeron sideways this is huge right here. Does he hang on to what he does? But he falls all the way back to the fourth spot. Oh, my goodness. Some of these guys in the championship are licking their chops right now as the 12 of Bergeron gets shoved out of the way. The 49 of David Heilman wants to make something of this as well because if he beats Bergeron, he will start out in front of him for the main event tonight. So that 49 car has a lot to race for right now. Slide job for the 49, trying to chop the nose off the 12, but Alex drives it right back down to the bottom and takes that third spot away through one and two. David turns it back down low. Braden Eiler trying to make a pass for position all at the same time. The 131 of Bobby Sant Jr. is also fighting for the race win with Cole Cabre. That single files out five cars. All within about eight tenths of a second here, all fighting for transfer spots. David Heilman right now, the one at risk. They single file and string out just a little bit through three and four. Cole Cabre is going to take a heat race win here today. Alex will wrestle his way back to third spot. Most drama-filled heat race of the night for sure.
Holy cow, this is huge right here. I'm not really sure where he'll line up at, but Alex Bergeron, for the first time all year, will not start within the first two rows of tonight's main event. That third place run, man, that's going to be huge right there. So I'm not sure if he's not feeling too confident right now, as he was the best car last time we were here at Blues Speedway Park. But that 12 car did not look too uh, good out in front of that field. And Cole Cabret gave him a little tap in the left rear, got him sideways, and a great save, though, by Bergeron to hang on to that thing and come home third. That, I believe, is going to translate to an 11th place starting spot for that wow. three-car of Alex Bergeron. So that's not, he's going to be starting outside the top 10. He's going to have a lot of work to do, full race results up there on your screen. Let's take a peek, though, at the starting grid for heat race number four as they grid them up. On the pole position, it's going to be the number 39 of Chase Cabray with his teammate of James Edens on the outside of that front row. Then they will have Adam Elby and Rusty Kruger on row number two with Kenneth Ake Jr. and Wayne Williams on row number three. And Cameron Dance will make up the sole car on row number four. But Swindell Speed Labs Esports, one, two, three in this final heat. Yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting to see right there. I'm sure those guys are going to be talking to each other on their third-party applications on TeamSpeak and such like that to try and help make sure that each one of those guys makes it into the main event. How about Rusty Kruger, though, right now, Randy? This is the best starting spot I think he's had all season long. He starts in a transfer spot for the beginning of this one, but can he hang on to it? We talked about him every single week, it seems like. He's been upside down all four weeks so far. Let's see if he can keep it off all fours here tonight. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. He was able to break the streak at Eldora of getting that thing upside down. Previously, he had had it wrong, uh, facing the wrong way in every night of racing we have had, but finally kept all four wheels down on the dirt. And let's see if he can do the same as well. James Eden is getting racy with the Irish safety truck. Looking a little bit like uh, a little bit of Dale Sr. and some Tony Stewart up there near the front of the field. I remember some entertaining moments with them having fun with the pace cars. Well, I'm thinking right now, I, I didn't mention it after that last heat race, but coming to the checkered, off turn four, Alex Bergeron was pretty high up on the racetrack, and I think he might have found something there. And he got a huge run on your second place finisher in that last heat race. And I think James Eden's right there was getting up there. He might have seen Alex Bergeron hit that stuff up there. And he's uh, trying to see what it's like under yellow right now. He might be trying to run that in here uh, for these eight laps coming up here soon. Let's take a peek. Seven cars, top four will transfer. Let's see what they can make of it. iRacing Safety Truck is going to let him loose, and Chase Cabray will be the one who gets on it. Green flag's going to fly off of turn four for the final heat of the night. Rusty Kruger, he's already sideways and in the wall. Yeah, whoever started the inside of him, I think maybe gave him a little bit of the right rear tire. That was Kenneth Dake Jr. And Dake right now to the inside of James Eden's having a good run so far on this one. He runs third. Two by two for their top four. A little bit in the wall of the 52 of James Edens. Oh, and just ahead of him, slapping the inside wall. Who is that running for third? Kenneth Dake Jr. He's going to drop back a number of spots. That's going to allow Cam Dance to slip into the transfer spot. We've seen that a few times already tonight. Drivers hitting the wall on the inside of turn one. It's a 74 of LB. He's going to slide Chase Cabray for the race lead. And Chase has a big run, but can't get it down low. But he's just about going to try to make this move on his teammate. Yeah, this is interesting right here to see these three teammates going at it. James Edens now to second tag. Nice one on the front straightaway. Chase Cabray back to his inside. What does Edens do here? He knows that Alex Bergeron had a bad heat race, and Edens needs to do everything he can to win this heat race to try and get a better starting spot. He's all over Adam Elby down the front straightaway. Does he make a move here, or does he wait? Looks like Elby's going to chop this uh, entry of the corner off, and Edens goes to the bottom. A little bit of moisture down there on the bottom of the racetrack right now. Randy, looks like there could be some speed down there. Yeah, seen, we've seen a couple of drivers experiment down there. You see everyone pretty much along the top this time. Transfer spot fight is still kicked up, though, between Cam, Dan Cam Dance and Dake Jr. Dake was the one on the bottom. Elby holds on to the race lead. James Edens will get a run down the back straightaway and cut it to the inside in towards three and four. Slide job up the top of the racetrack, nearly tags the walls. Edens is going to hold the lead across the line by just a little bit, 42 hundredths of a second, as they have a lap and a half to go. And Edens is going to get back to the bottom of Elby for the lead. Yeah, good move there by James Eden. He tagged the cushion just right when he slid in front of Adam Elby, and Elby was not get to get, able to get the full crossover on him. White flag is in the air. The battle for second continues as Chase Cabray now goes around the outside of Adam Elby. What does Elby do here? Does he push the issue as James Eden slides himself into turns three and four? Battle for second down to the start finish line. Give it to Chase Cabray. James Eden's with the win. Elby third and fourth will go to Cam Dance. He started dead last in that one. He'll come away with the transfer spot.
Cam Dan is going to be more than happy with that. Maybe benefit a little bit from some drivers in front of him having problems, but you know what? You'll take all the freebies you can get as Cabray, Edens, LB, and Kruger. They will transfer. Or excuse me, I take that back. Uh, Edens, Cabray, LB, and Dance. They will be the four drivers who transfer here. And actually talking about what we saw down there in turn one, Chase, We've seen a handful of cars already. You know, we've seen people tagging that inside wall. I don't think we saw that at all, really, the opening night of racing of this season. So I think maybe that fast line may be a little bit further down on the racetrack, and some people are having some trouble hitting it, uh, as we've seen, I think, really three cars bounce off that inside wall already. Yeah, I think it really starts coming off turn four is what the issue is. It's this straightaway on, on the front stretch, man. is super slick, and it starts to get bumpy. The cushion starts getting built up against the wall, and when these guys come off the top, off turn four, man, They're, they got a handful of wheel trying to get that thing, trying to get the power down, trying to get straight down the straightaway. And sometimes they don't hit it just right, and, and they end up going towards that inside wall, and they don't get set up just right for it and uh, end up hitting that inside wall. So, I mean, we saw Alex Bergeron hit it as well. So, um, obviously, it's been pretty tricky so far tonight. We're going to take a peek at the, the first of your last chance qualifiers here. Of course, like we said, 12 laps, top two will go to the main event. It's going to be Blade Witt and Braden Eiler on that front row with Matt McKinney and Anthony Lopresto on row number two. Robert Kerstetter and Justin Thomas on row three. And Joe Quinn tagging the back of the, B, uh, the beat main number one here. So a handful of cars we've seen have some good pace here tonight, but maybe just on the wrong side of luck. But really a lot of familiar names for the LCQs thus far this season. Yeah, how about Justin Thomas right here, Randy? This is going to be huge for him as he came into the night. He's made every single feature we've had so far. And uh, right now, this one looks like it's going to be pretty tough for him starting back in that sixth spot. He's got to get by at least four drivers. He's got to run second or better. So that Mode Motorsports number 23 car is going to have his work cut out for him. Also, Joe Quinn, we've seen, seen him have some good runs so far this year in the main event. So uh, keep your eye on that number 90 car as he's going to have a little work to do as well. Well, I know that everyone involved with Mode, the likes of Kai Long and JR, who's constantly in the chat, I know they're going to love to see a uh, Justin Thomas highlight, as we've gotten one, I think, nearly out of every single night of racing thus far. So let's see if they can get themselves another one here. The iRacing Safety Truck will be peeling off the racetrack this time through. So let's see what we can make happen. Blade Wynn's going to want to, of course, put in a good night of racing as well. It's been a while, I think, since we've seen him really have uh, the sort of night of racing that he can be happy with. iRacing Safety Truck. Looks toward pit road, says those hot dogs look good. I'm going to turn down and get one. Blade Wit is going to wait, 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 and he's going to get on it. It's a good start from Eiler, but not good enough. And Matt McKinney is going to try for second in towards turn one. Yeah, Matt McKinney on the bottom right behind the seven car. Blade with a three car tray on the top of the racetrack, led by the five car, Braden Eiler. Justin Thomas is back there as well as they go slide. Oh, the 51 car slides between the number 57 of Lopresto and the five car of Eiler. They are going at his, oh, McKinney's into the outside wall. Turn one hangs onto it and really doesn't lose a whole lot of ground. Now to the outside of Lopresto goes the 51 car. They make contact down the back straightaway, and Lopresto's not going to be very happy about that one. He didn't lose ground. He managed to pick up ground after slapping the wall. Justin Thomas, he's going to go hunting now on Anthony Lopresto. Sort of a slider through turn number one as the fight is on for the race lead as well. Eiler and Witt run side by side and have been locked together since the start of this B main. Justin Thomas in the background, able to get around Lopresto. So he's already up to fourth. Lopresto throws the slider, maybe a little bit of contact, but Justin Thomas just sneaking by, and he should be clear and be able to fight with second and third now. Yeah, second now belongs to the 51 of Matt McKinney, who we saw bounce off the, the turn one wall there a couple of laps ago. The 51 car of McKinney might have some damage, but right now that car is working quite well for him as Justin Thomas now moves into the third spot around the seven car of Blade Witt. But he's got to get by one more car. That's the 51 car of Matt McKinney as they work down the front straightaway. A couple of fast cars that Justin will have to work through. Braden Eiler as well as Matt McKinney. Off the top of corners number one and two. The whole field really starting to hit that upper groove. Eiler's run in the middle, a little bit of a slide job line. McKinney's right up against the outside wall. And these top two are starting to just open up a gap over that number 23 Mood Motorsports car. Yeah, last time by, your fastest car was the 51 of Matt McKinney in the second spot. Justin Thomas really not too far off those lap times, but he's got about a five-car length gap back to that 51 car. So Thomas really needs to put a couple laps together. We've only got four to go here as your leader is still Bray Nyler. 51 of Matt McKinney in second. Justin Thomas in the third spot. Blade Witt and Joe Quinn going at it for fourth. Four laps ago, they come across the stripe. Matt McKinney, how aggressive will he get for this? He definitely seems like the quicker driver out there on the racetrack, but will he really start getting after it for the race win? Or will he keep up and just take the safe transfer position? It's only a one spot, or excuse me, a one row starting difference for these guys, so I don't think he should be overly aggressive here, Chase. And it's three to go now. Yeah, if I was the 51 car, I'd be really just biding my time, making sure I'm hitting my marks right. 
And uh, just the straightaway seem like the hardest part for these guys right now. They're wiggling all over the place down the straightaway. So just making sure I don't hit that outside wall down the front straightaway and hang on to this thing for another two laps here as we come down to the white flag next time by. Thomas has closed the gap last time by. Justin Thomas was two tenths faster than Matt McKinney. Can't we see another highlight reel here as we come down to the white flag, Randy? White flag here in LCQ number one. I think, I think a little bit high for Justin Thomas that time through. He's going to go way low this time through one and two. Can he make that stick? No. Thing seems like he loses a little bit of ground. Three and four for the final time. The 51 of McKinney. Slide job line on the five of Eiler. I think that's defensive. Eiler and McKinney hold on to it. And Justin Thomas will come up just a little bit short on transferring to the main event tonight. Rest of your finishing order is going to be Eiler, McKinney, Thomas, Witt, Quinn, Lapresto, and Kurt Setter finishing eight laps down in that one. But this track here uh, tonight, Chase, looking very, very difficult. Like you said, you've been talking about it the whole night. The straightaways are slickened off and really bumpy, and that fast groove is right against the outside wall, and it looks bumpy up there. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's pretty treacherous uh, uh, road to, to tread right there. So these guys are really struggling on the top of the racetrack on the straightaways right now. So I'm not sure what kind of adjustments these guys can maybe make to their cars. The guys in the main event I'm talking that can maybe help them get down these straightaways here. But here's our next um, our next B main event. The, line, the last two cars to transfer to the back of the main event are right here. Here it's Joel Berkeley on the pole. This one, car number nine. And on his outside, the 47 of Kenneth Dake Jr. Row number two is the 421 of Britton Roxbury. And on his outside, the 10K of Rusty Kruger. Third row will be the 19 of Ryan Mayer. On the outside of him, it's the four car of Wayne Williams. Alex Smolders on the inside of row four. And on the outside of him, or excuse me, Smolders on the inside, on the outside is the number 75 of Jesse Dacus. He'll round out the eight car field for 12 more laps here. The final two transfer spots up for grabs. I'd say the only name that really stands out, Chase, of the drivers in this LCQ is this driver on the pole of LCQ number two. That nine of Joel Berkeley, championship contender. He's not going to be, I think, very happy with himself here tonight. You know, cutting it a little bit short in qualifying, coming up short in this heat race on the night that Alex Bergeron is not the picture perfect self, or has not been picture perfect the way he's been all night. Yeah, all and this was and this was probably the track that, that Berkeley was looking forward to the most as he ran second. I mentioned earlier he ran second here the first time we came here. So this might have been Berkeley's best shot at grabbing a future win uh, with this series this year, but um, he's going to have a lot of work cut out for him. He's going to hope for a couple of yellows or or a really racy track and a good car for him in the main event. So as long as he makes it through these 12 laps, obviously he'll be in the main event, but he's going to have his uh, work cut out for him later on. 12 more laps, and we will decide the final two cars to make up the 30 car main event, excuse me, the 20 car main event. 30 laps of action coming up for you in just a handful of moments, but let's see. The two drivers are going to tag the tail end of the field. Pace truck peels onto pit road, and Joe Berkeley gets on it. We are green, and Rusty Kruger actually able to get a good start. They're going to be nearly three wide for second. Yeah, the 421 of Roxbury into the second spot. Rusty Cougar just behind him in third. Here comes Ryan Merritt now to the inside. Big run for him down the back straightaway. He looks inside of Rusty Cougar for the third spot, but he's not up on that preferred groove on the top of the racetrack right now. Oh, Cougar sideways as the 19 car. Ryan Merritt takes over the third spot now. Fighting for second right now is actually going to be Ryan Mayer, able to pick up the run on Britton Roxbury and take that transfer spot away. Behind, we have Alex Mulder ahead of Rusty Kruger as well. So the fight is on for transfer positions as Ryan Mayer still fighting with Britton Roxbury for that second spot. Now he's trying to hunt down Berkeley. And that 19 car looks like he's got an extra 20 horsepower compared to the rest of these guys. He's driving by them down the straightaways. Ryan Mayer, this is the best we've seen him all season long. So he now looks to the inside of Berkeley for the race lead. The 421 of Roxbury is still right there as well as the 211 of Alex Smolders. They're going at it for second right now. They are, and Rusty Kruger in the 10K, not far off this as well. So it's a four-way scrap for second. Roxbury able to get around the outside of Mayer, and I can't quite make the move up through corners number one and two. Down the back straightaway for that 421, and he's not able to get clear. As Rusty Kruger behind, he's going to fight with Alex Smolders. To the bottom goes that uh, the 10K car and can't quite make that stick, but still side by side for second as Rockberry hugs the cushion and Mayer runs the middle. Yeah, the middle of the racetrack actually looks pretty viable right now. The 19 car is maintaining pace with your leader and is staying side by side with the 421 of Rockberry. So Ryan Mayer might be showing these guys that the middle groove of the racetrack right now is definitely a possibility as he's running pretty solid lap times right now, holding off Alex Smolders as well. But the laps are winding down, coming around this time. On lap number eight, four laps to go in this one. 
Brent Roxbury starting to chase down Joe Berkeley just a little bit. The gap only four tenths of a second with five minutes left to go in this final last chance qualifier. Three, three, and four. Ryan Mayer is going to go to the bottom of Brenton Roxbury. I don't think he'll be close enough to make anything of it. No, he won't. Berkeley's going to try the bottom through one and two this time. Slider line through one and two as Mayer still fights with Britain down the back straight. Yeah, Ryan Mayer, he looks very good right now in the middle of the racetrack. That car is locked down, but it's just not good enough. The top is just a, a hair better right now than that middle of the racetrack. But uh, Mayer is definitely keeping that 421 of Roxbury honest right now, making sure he does not make any mistakes. Because if he does, that 19 car is going to take that transfer spot away. Coming around this time by two laps to go is the battle for second continues. Oh, Smolder's in the wall. Smolder's in the wall. Big contact. He actually went on the exit road there are some big big issues for smolders that's gonna be the end of his night as you're gonna see him he's gonna collect the wall actually off of two and then he gets back into it going into three and well he's basically gonna get thrown out of the racetrack is that 211 car so big big problems for Alex Smolders. The 19 machine has gotten around. Britton Roxbury, the white flag in the air for this final LCQ. Berkeley holds on to the lead. Ryan Mayer fights with Britton Roxbury coming off of turn four and coming to the line. It's going to be a Ryan Mayer able to hold on to that second transfer spot. Britton Roxbury just a couple of tents back, but Berkeley and Mayer will be the two cars making it to the feature race this evening with Roxbury, Kruger, Kenneth Dake Jr., Jesse Dawkins, Wayne Williams, and Alex Smolders rounding out the eight car field in that final LCQ. Couple of awesome last chance qualifier races. The track is gonna open up for a couple of moments for some warm up. but before we bring you the feature event, we are gonna step aside and take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back, do not go away. 20 of the best of the night doing battle for 30 laps. and we've been wondering when the 12 car of Alex Bergeron was going to stumble a little bit and he picks up a new sponsor and he chooses to race directly after to maybe have things not go his way. He's going to roll off 11th place tonight and that's not the only big talking point here tonight, Chase, for Alex starting so far deep in this field is that we really don't have a ton of the championship contenders fighting with him starting out in front of him because they've not had great, great nights of racing as well. It's really only James Eden in the top five as well, well excuse me, it's uh, James Edens and I believe uh, uh, Lewis Hewitt, the only two cars in the top six, they're really gonna start out there in front of Bergeron. Yeah, this is huge right now for James Edens in that 52 car. Uh, he's gonna be trying to put in at least a podium run here tonight as uh, we need to keep we need to keep an eye on uh, Alex Bergeron, one camera on Bergeron and one battle or one camera at the front of this field because Tim Ryan, he is hungry for a victory. He has had terrible runs, terrible luck all season long right now, and he's looking to pick up a big $300 victory here tonight at Blues Speedway Park. Another guy we haven't really talked about a whole lot, Dylan Hauser on the outside of the front row. He's going to be looking for a big win here tonight as well. He definitely is, and we're like you said, we are going to need an iguana working the cameras here today, keeping an eye on as many cars as absolutely possible. It's not a team of iguanas for sure, but warm up for these guys is in the waning moments. If you're liking what you're watching, be sure to subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network for not only coverage of the World of Outlaws and Austin Energy Drink Sprint Car Championship Series, but as well as the Porsche Esports Super Cup, the NASCAR Peak Candy Freeze iRacing Series, and the other world championships we have coming to you as well. The other World of Outlaw uh, Morton uh, Late Model Championship Series, as well as the iRacing Rallycross World Championship a little bit later on in the year. And of course, the BRS GT Endurance Championship as well. Field 
ridding themselves up for the 30 lap main event tonight. Let's take a peek at how the 20 cars will roll their way off. Tim Ryan will take his first pole position in one of the first feature races of the season with Dylan Hauser on the outside of that front roll. Cole Cabray and James Edens will make up row number two with Lewis Hewitt and Austin Selman on row number three. Bobby Sant Jr. and Chase Cabray will roll off on the fourth row with Logan Clampett and Vinny Sansone on row number five. Championship leader, championship dominator will roll off on row six on the inside of Adam Elby with Nelson Webster and Nick Cooper on row number seven. David Heilman and Cameron Dance make up row number eight with Braden Eiler and Joe Berkeley on row number nine. And Matt McKinney and Ryan Mayer will take up the last two spots of this 20 car field. It's really James Edens getting the great opportunity here tonight, Chase. The only one starting really clear out ahead of Bergeron as well as Lewis Hewitt. But of course, James comes in second in the point. Great opportunity for him to really reel this championship up halfway to the 12 of Bergeron. Yeah, if you're just joining us for the first time, that 52 car right there on your screen, the black, white, and purple machine, he comes in about 30 or 40 points back of Alex Bergeron for the championship lead. And man, I got to think, Aaron Randy, that there might be a little extra nerves out of that 52, uh, 52 car of Edens because not only is he nervous to try and win this race, but now he's got the pressure that he has to perform right here in order to win that championship. He really has to dig down deep here and put, this, put together a solid run. He has to really, I think you're actually absolutely right. He needs to be absolutely picture perfect for today. The only way he's not reeled in points on Berger on this far tonight is he did not out qualify Alex, but he did outdo Alex when it comes to the heat race. Winning heat race number four did James Eden. But it's going to be the defending series champion. He's not put together the season he's wanted, but he's put together a night he would have wanted here tonight. 90, the, excuse me, the 98 Altus Esports car of Tim Ryan at the head of the field. He will be the one in command and bringing us to green flag racing. Pace truck puts him in command of the field and we are green for 30 laps. These 20 guys are gonna duke it out in towards one and two. And we see both the top and the bottom start picking up some pace. Yeah, after that last qual or last chance qualifier, we know that the middle and the bottom of the racetrack is definitely viable contact. Oh, Austin Selman gets getting with James Edens. And those two are able to continue on. We're almost four wide in the middle part of the field right now as they continue to try and sort it out back there. Alex Bergeron, car number 12, he's starting 11th. He's looking for the fifth spot down the back straight with the 12 car is not wasting any time as they make contact on the outside of him. And it looks like we have one car sideways. Bobby Sand Jr. keeps on going. We had one car a little bit sideways, able to hold on to it, but an opening, what an opening run for Alex Bergeron. He goes from the 11th spot, and he is ahead of his championship rival of James Eden. It's a car we've been talking about, having a fantastic opportunity to make up points on Bergeron, and Alex just doesn't even, it doesn't even face him. It's like he's been born to run at the head of feature races, Chase, because he just, how do you pass seven cars in two laps at this level? Well, he got very lucky as Bobby Sand Jr. and a couple guys got together at the front of the field, bunched everybody up, and I don't think Alec Bergeron even thought about lifting right there as he's got that left front tire right against that inside wall, and now he's working on the guy that finished second to him last week, Eldora Speedway. That's the three car, the white and blue number three of Lewis Hewitt running in the third spot. Bergeron's all over him down the front straightaway. It looks like everybody's migrated down to the bottom of the racetrack. The first car to work a little bit up off the bottom is that 52 car of James Edens. Saltis Esports, who leads two TTL cars, run second and third. Alex Bergeron racing in that fourth spot, and TTL in fifth. Iron Man Motorsports, Vinny Sansone finds his, himself running in that sixth spot, fighting with the 52 with James Eden. The 80 car runs the preferred line, it seems like, down along the bottom. Nick Cooper is trying to run the middle and get around uh, Vinny Sansone as well alongside James Edens. They're three wide for a moment off of turn four, and Sansone's going to have to lift out of it. Edens will be the beneficiary there. So a couple different lines of racing happening deeper in the field, but everyone else really has moved off the top of the racetrack chase up near the front of the field. It's the middle and the bottom that seems to be preferred at the moment. I think the reason for that, Randy, is because it's just so hard, and now there goes Alex Bergeron. Bergeron pulls out a line, goes to the top of the racetrack. That is where we saw him win this race, the very first race of the entire season. Bergeron won here at Palooza Speedway Park on the top of the racetrack. We'll see if that 12 car can maybe put a couple of laps together and track down the top two drivers. He's now made it past Lewis Hewitt and takes the third spot contact between Hewitt and Bergeron down the back straightaway. Didn't quite have it, and Lewis Hewitt said, I'm not going to give this up that easy. They stay side by side. 
off of turn four in towards one and two. Alex stays off the cushion. Hauser in front of him is going to try it. If he's not quick up there, this could become a three-car scrap for second. Down the back straight away in towards one and two. We're going to get our first caution of the night. And I believe we have Nelson Webster in the 15 slow on the entry, excuse me, the exit of the front straightaway. Seems like a bit of contact with the 18 of Austin Selman. Austin, it seems like, just burns to the right down the front straightaway and bumper hooks the 15 car Webster. Yeah, let's get a good look at it here. <clears throat> Looks like, uh, oh yeah, so the 18 just got into the back of him right there. I thought maybe the 15 came off the top right there in that straightaway that we've been talking about all night long, maybe bit him right there and got into him, but it looks like the 18 came up just a hair right there and got in the back bumper of Nelson Webster, but uh, still got the front wings on there, so he should be able to continue on, uh, but unfortunately, he's back in the 20th spot. And, I mean, what, what a great situation for Alex. Alex, especially with the timing being when the caution came out, Chase, he kind of gets a freebie. He gets promoted up to third, so plus eight on the night for Bergeron, and he's already in the money, and we're not even halfway. Well, how about this guy? I didn't even realize it, but the 44 of Logan Clampett is up in the fifth spot right now, Randy. I'm pretty sure he started ninth on the field, and that 44 car, we talk about him being a pavement driver here on iRacing.com, but he has made his way up to fifth. His best career finish came right here at Volusia Speedway Park the very first week when he ran 10th. So this is definitely his favorite track on the schedule, if I might say so myself. And if you take a look right there, it kind of tells the story. Most of your championship contenders, those are the movers and shakers. Bergeron up eight spots. Berkeley up nine spots. Heileman up five spots. Cooper up seven spots. Elby up four spots. The only driver who I'd say is really in the championship hunt who's lost ground is that 52 car of James Edens, who's probably thinking to himself, how did I manage to let this opportunity slip through my fingers and not hold that 12 car behind him? He's going to be the one, I think, at the end of tonight, really thinking about what could have been. But the driver, who's looked pretty much picture perfect at the front of the field, is a 98 of Tim Ryan. We saw some drivers, second, third, and fourth, start experimenting with different lines. Tim has held steady in the middle and the bottom side of the racetrack, has not even thought about moving off of it. He's going to be back in command of the field once again. And here we go back to green flag racing, 16 to go here at Volusia. And a great restart right there for Tim Ryan as Alex Bergeron immediately goes to work to the inside of Dylan Hauser. They're almost side by side down the back straightaway. The 12 car, now he's up alongside of them. Bergeron edges ahead down into turns three and four. That car could not get any closer to the inside wall. And Bergeron now into the runner-up spot. Oh, and he's going to cook out of close with Dylan Hauser through one and two. Just about going to be able to hold on to that spot that was well defended by Bergeron any closer and I think we would have been talking about that number 12 who will be CSI Sox Shocks Machine ending up facing the wrong way. Now we saw these two fight for the championship last year. We've seen a ton of wing sprint car duels between Alex Bergeron and Tim Ryan and we're going to see our first one in 2019. Tim's going to run the bottom but the 12 is hooked up even lower than he is to cross the stripe. Alex loses a little bit of ground but this is one of the most iconic fights we've seen in this series these last two seasons. Wow, wow, wow. Look at the different lines that are being used right now to run the bottom of the racetrack as Bergeron keeps his left side tires in it almost all the way down the straightaway. Tim Ryan opens up a huge late apex to hit the bottom right here, and that's what's allowing him to drive way down the straightaways. Bergeron really catches him on entry and through the center of the corner, but right now the 98 car has the advantage. He's not uh, letting that 12 car get up next to him off the edge of the corner right there. Nearly contact right there on turn four. Alex nearly getting into the back of the Tim. Meanwhile, the fight for fifth is seven cars strong at the moment. I see Berkeley, I see Heileman, I see the 44 Lampet. Schmidt Cooper's in that fight. James Eden is in that fight. Huge gaggle of cars trying to get themselves into the top five. They were three by three for a couple moments a couple of laps ago. These teams just fan out off of four and then get it back two by two. Nearly four wide as they come down the back straightaway. Yeah, what a great battle going on back there. But right now, the fastest car on the racetrack is a driver that's not running the bottom. It's the three of Lewis Hewitt. Hewitt's now into the third spot as Bergeron steps it back up to the top side of the racetrack. In one and two, he pulls up alongside Tim Ryan. Ryan's got a good drive up the bottom right there down the back straightaway. Now Bergeron back to the bottom, maybe just testing the waters up there. We come around for seven laps to go. A great battle going on at the front of the field as the three car of Hewitt has went to the top of the racetrack around the entire speedway right now and is tracking down your top two drivers. He definitely is a 12 of Bergeron though alongside Tim Ryan for the race lead. Just can't quite get the momentum off the top of the racetrack. He gets a little bit loose on, the, on that top groove down the straightaway. Hewitt hooks up the top groove of the racetrack. Once again, working down the back straightaway. Gap down nine tenths of a second 
from first to third. Bergeron right back up against the inside wall where he's been so quick. Tim Ryan moving around the racetrack a little bit. He's moved up about half a groove from where he was a few laps ago, and they've opened up a slight margin of Lewis Hewitt. That last trip by, Bergeron wants to eye the, the bottom, though. Lewis Hewitt has found the line right now, Randy. It is bottom and one and two, or bottom three and four, top one and two. That three car, the last couple of laps has been over a tenth faster than the two cars in front of him. But he's running out of time. We've got four laps to go. Now the three car tries to top around the entire racetrack. Hewitt doing everything he can to track down your top two. But the battle continues between Tim Ryan and Alex Bergeron. Bergeron back to the top in one and two. It's about to get good here from, uh, for the next three laps. We saw Alex take the race victory in the season opener here by hooking up the top groove of the racetrack. It would be amazing if he could somehow do it again and make it a plus 10 position night on the race here. A little bit bumpy up there. You see him struggling. I think he may have tagged the wall, and that's going to give a slight advantage to the 98 of Tim Ryan. Two laps to go as they come off turn number four, and down the front straightaway, Alex does not have a lot of time to make something of this. It's Hewitt, Berkeley, Heileman, who have lined up third, fourth, and fifth. They're all nose to tail, fighting for those uh, spots behind and the last paying uh, spot on the night. Off of turn four, for the penultimate time, Bergeron has hunted down Ryan just a little bit. Gap at the line, just over two tenths of a second. Can the 12 car of Alex Bergeron make some sort of miracle happen here at the halfway point in the championship? Through three and four for the final time. The 98 will run the bottom and Tim Ryan, he'll finally take a race victory in 2019. But the story of the night is going to be Alex Bergeron finding nine spots here in the fifth round of the championship to come home in second place here at Volusia Speedway Park. Wow, he turned an absolutely dismal night into what could have been a terrible night. He's made it into a good one. Alex Pergeron, man, just when you think he's down and out, he proves everybody wrong and drives by six cars on the opening lap of the, of the feature event and gets himself up in the second by the end of that thing. But how about Joel Berkeley? He does not end up on the podium, but Randy, if I'm not mistaken, Joel Berkeley started 18th on this field and will end up fourth. A great run for him. But it's also great to see Tim Ryan, after having such a terrible start to the season, pick up a win here tonight. I think your top six, and I'll run down as we're just about to go down your full race results. I'll go down the position scan. But let's take a peek at the full race results here tonight. Tim Ryan, he puts in a fantastic night of racing, the best that we've seen out of him since 2018. Quick time, wins his heat race, and leads every single lap of racing here in the main event. Alex Bergeron, probably the story of the night. He goes plus nine. Starts 11th, he ends up in second. Lewis Hewitt picks up two spots to finish in third. Joel Berkeley up 14 positions from 18th all the way up to fourth. David Heilman from 15th all the way up to fifth. And Nick Cooper from 14th all the way up to sixth. Only two drivers in your top six started inside of the top 10, nonetheless the top five. Dylan Hauser, he will come home in the seventh spot with James Edens in eighth, Adam LB ninth, and Logan Clampett will round out your top ten. Matt McKinney comes home in the eleventh position, Cam Dance in twelfth, Ryan Mayer in thirteenth, Austin Settleman in fourteenth, Vinny Sansone fifteenth, Cole Cabray, not the night he would have wanted, he started third, comes home in the sixteenth position, Nelson Webster in seventeenth, Bobby Sant Jr. in eighteenth with Chase Cabray and Braden Eiler rounding out the twenty car field we are going to take a break for a couple moments catch our breath sort out what in the world we just happened and that was one of the most up and down main events we've ever had here on race spot tv and the iRacing esports network do not go away post-race coverage in just a couple of moments
what a story we've had here at Volusia. Been an absolutely amazing night of racing. So many stories up and down the field. He talked about Bergeron seeming like he was finally in for a not picture perfect night of racing. He somehow made something of this and picks himself up a couple of hundred dollars. Louis, uh, excuse me, Joe Berkeley comes from nearly the last row on the field, gets his way up into fourth. David Heilman makes it up 10 spots. Nick Cooper does the same, but it's this man right here, I think is the story of the evening. He comes in struggling in 2019 and all of a sudden, Tim Ryan, you just hooked it up tonight. Quick time, won your heat and picked up a nice and calm $300 here at Volusia Speedway Park. Where did you find this speed tonight? Uh, evening, fellas. Um, yeah, oh, I've always had the pace, but just, yeah, had a bit of bad luck um, this season and not um, executing the best of my ability of myself. And it's probably just in the lack of laps and yeah just failing to execute but tonight obviously just got the job done the, the qualifying lap was actually a little bit scrappy so i was surprised to put it on the pole then feature race yeah just was comfortable on the bottom but probably fueled it up way too much so. yeah and tim i'm kind of interested here is as the season you know you said it that you didn't really have the crate start when we all we all know that but um now that you win this i mean obviously there's probably slim to no chance that you'll probably win the championship this year what's your mindset now for the next five races uh, going out what's what are your goals and what's your mindset uh, just the coming race really um yeah that's about it uh just as you said the there's no hope for a championship and i'm well aware of that but just to come and have fun uh i didn't prepare for this race at all um except for driving to my house this morning it's i am in australia i drove for where my sim is didn't do any practice um throughout the last week and yeah just got lucky this week i guess and that's just been a bit of this this series as well just not not getting the luck to to go forward uh, Lima Land, I stopped a practice, then had a wheel failure between practice and qualifying. That's why I never um, did a qualifying lap there, and then just being caught in heats of racing incidents. But um, that's a bit of my fault as well from not doing my job in qualifying that previously done in last season. Now, talking about here tonight, Tim, I mean, we saw you actually have a fight with Alex, which is it's been a while since we've seen one of those uh, here on Race Spot TV, so it's good to see a little bit of nostalgia from 2018. Is this nostalgia a good word to use for a year ago? I'm not really sure. But regardless, we saw you guys really have a fight here. But, you know, you come out of the first heat race, and you don't touch the track whatsoever until the end of the night. And everyone, it seemed like, you know, through the LCQs, you know, the late heat races, it seems like that upper groove was moving to the top side of the racetrack. What did you guys see in the warm-up that saw you really go from not being on the track for most of the evening to suddenly everyone running down along the bottom? That was Probably put it simple. I was scared. No, I set the I set the car up to run the bottom. Um, I thought that'd be the go, which is complete opposite of what I did uh, the last time I was here. If you remember in the B main, I I railed the top, but I just knew I'd be out in front. I could stick it on the bottom a little bit more comfortable, and and it'd be hard to pass. So I knew Alex was probably quicker than me, but I knew if I just ran that line that I was running and didn't have to change it up, that that'd that'd be good enough. And well, uh, Tim, for you, I mean, we we saw you not quite get things hooked up. Uh, I'm going to sort of merge two questions here at the one. First things first, who gets it done for that number 98 Alstis Esports car? And what do you think you're going to have going into the next round at Kokomo? Um, yeah, Kokomo, to be honest, I've never ever done a race there. Um, I don't do many laps on the sim nowadays. Um, I've, I've done some uh, hosted servers on it, but never actually a race as such. Um, so next week will be my first. So I don't know what to expect. Um, but... I'd like to thank uh, Logitech G, Altus Esports, and all our amazing partners. Um, Logitech G, Astro Gaming, Motum Simulation, and Canvas Australia. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a lackluster season for myself, but we've been pulling the results together on the roadside, so it's nice to finally pull my weight and get a result on the board. There he was, race winner tonight, the number 98 of Tim Ryan. You think? I think it's pretty easy to tell Chase that he's rather pleased with himself to be able to pull this one off. But I think the other driver who's going to be stoked to somehow make something of this is going to be the driver of this number 12 car, Alex Bergeron. Alex, you picked up seven spots in the opening two laps of this race. How in the world did you manage that? Oh, I just ran the bottom, you know, trying to get the more shot of this track. Uh, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, I was just trying to run down the leaders and, you know, we, uh, we almost had a chance there, but, you know, the, the complete bottom there went away and just I couldn't make the car stick down there and, you know, Tim was just right in the middle and, you know, I, I can't run the same line as he does, you know. You, you're never going to pass a guy running the same line, so I had to try something and it didn't work out, so I'm going to grab second tonight. 
Yeah, I mean, dude, so that was, um, it's pretty insane. Kind of, Randy was talking to, um, to uh, Tim about it, but it seemed like the top of the track was super good throughout everything until the main event. Was the reason that everybody kind of migrated to the bottom was because it's better, or was it because it was so hard to run the top and make it down the straightaway without having any kind of issue, like, you know, sliding sideways or slapping off the wall or something? What was the reasoning for everybody going down to the bottom there for the main event? Oh, uh, you know, I... I... I think it's just because it was very, very tough to run out there. I, I tried there the last three laps, I think, you know, trying to trying to get something out of Tim. You know, we we uh, we run the top in one and two when I was right behind him, and you know, I was able to get the top better in one and two. And you know, I was right beside him in the back straightaway, then because I was just back in the slick in three and just couldn't make it happen. So I, it's just really because the track is very tough up there tonight. You know, it was very tough. The car would just jump like everywhere and you know it was very tough you know i i had you know it was a hard time for me and you know try to keep the car on on rail you know maybe if i would have you know got a setup to run up there would have been better but i knew if i wanted to get up there soon and you know quick you know i had to you know make something for the bottom and that's what we've done tonight the boring at kokomo is where we're going to head out next time alex i don't think we saw that track last season in this championship it really is sort of famous as a non-wing track home of the brian clausen uh indiana double that they run the same uh same day of, as racing as the indianapolis 500 but i mean what's your plan going into the bull ring you were good at lima land you were very good at lima land uh but as well as the fact that we only have five races left kokomo eldora williams grove charlotte and knoxville uh how do you feel about that entire run of tracks closing up this championship uh, it's it's gonna be you know, it's gonna be difficult for sure. You know these are all tough tracks. Moons Grove uh, included, uh, Kokomo especially. You know it's gonna be the first time in the World Championship, so you know, it's definitely gonna be up top. I'm sure. You know, uh, so it's gonna be you know, having a good qualifying lap for sure. And uh, you know it, this field is very stacked. You know, so anybody else, anybody can be you know up there up up top for qualifying. So it's it's very difficult, but. Uh, you know, Knoxville, it's a good track. You know, I, I think we're going to do great there. Williams Grove, too. Uh, and Charlotte, I don't know yet. You know, it's uh, not my favorite track, you know, but we'll do everything we can. And, you know, that, that was a good point tonight for us for a championship. Yeah, it definitely was. You're going to come out of this one 62 points uh, ahead of everyone else in this championship. So congratulations on that, Alex, and somehow turning something from nothing the way it definitely seemed like with the number of your championship rivals starting out ahead of you but before we let you go who gets it done for that number 12 at new obi csi shocks car rolling in here to volusia uh you know first off you know thank you to all my partners uh especially our new partner coming on board for the rest of the season uh competition suspension inc uh they are you know building chocks and for a top series and uh just came on board so i gotta thank them enough i can't thank them enough for everything uh it's gonna be a good rest of the season we'll try to get that championship it's gonna be tough but we'll try everything we can and the rest of my partners newbie.com sign shop at keenies bk designs max mcclough racing martyr inc uh everybody watching coleman gulick uh p gulick paul keeney uh my girlfriend for supporting me and watching as well and you know each and every day um it's very good. Uh, I appreciate that. And um, you guys for broadcasting, you know, Irising for putting this up, Wall of Outlaws, and uh, nonetheless, Team ABR and Jason Nygaard, we uh, we work hard and, uh, you know, we try to get the best results ever, like we can. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to do everything we can for the rest of the season. Well, there he is. And the hard work definitely paying off with a season's worst finish thus far of second position. Third driver we'll be talking to tonight is the number three of Lewis Hewitt. He comes home third tonight. Lewis, I want to wonder, around halfway point of that race, was there a point you kind of thought to yourself, wait a second, all these guys I'm racing, I didn't start anywhere near? Because you kind of went from running with a bunch of people that started in the top five to a bunch of people that started outside of the top 15. Uh, yeah, definitely. After that first caution, it uh, it all changed up, didn't it? Had uh, David and Joel turn up uh, from the back, and Alex was there from mid-pack as well. Yeah, it's a lot different than the start. And no, uh, you Lewis, go, oh sorry, Randy, but uh, no, Lewis, you go ahead. Okay, yeah. The, so Lewis, man, it was pretty. Um, it was interesting to watch there. The last ten or so laps, I was keeping track of the lap times, and and you, when you when you hit the top just right, you were actually a tenth or two faster than 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 um, Tim and Alex both together. So um, was it just super hard to stay consistent up there? Because I think that maybe if you were able to keep that car up on the top and and run consistent laps up there, you might be able to track those guys down. 
Yeah, I, th I thought I had a chance to track them down, I really did. Um, you know, one, 1 and 2, the top was comfortable to run. I, c I could sit up there all race and it was fine, but 3 and 4 is just really difficult on exit. you you got to drift right up to the wall. And there's a nice big cushion up there that grabs the car and uh, throws you around down the straights. So I was, you know, just making it uh, hard for myself with that. But yeah, uh, felt fast. And now for you guys, I'm actually curious because you guys at TTL, I believe, are the largest team in the series, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, might how be is equal it with, with Swindell, but it's close. It's how is it with you guys having so many teammates that you're constantly having to fight in? Because it seems like you guys are always. It's always like you and Joel Berkeley, or one of you and Nick, and then or, or one of you, and then say Logan or Cam Dance gets involved somewhere. How difficult is it having so many teammates that you have to keep up with in this series? Because all of you guys seem to be roughly around, you know, on, on any given night, able to run somewhere around potentially for the win uh, to inside of that top 10. Uh, you know, you're, you always are a little bit more cautious around teammates. That's, that's just how it is. Um, I would think I was behind Dylan for a lot of that race there, and... Um, I just sat there comfortable. I, I really didn't want to. Didn't really, really didn't want to do anything to ruin his race. And then Joel at the end, uh, he was putting the pressure on me, and I was, I was, you know, I was starting to feel like if I should move out of his way, but I just, yeah, I stayed in third. Well, that's <laughs> I think all you can really expect of yourself is uh, holding off your teammate for the, for that third place, especially for that easy hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, but regardless, Lewitt, uh, congratulations on a third place run here tonight. Definitely a good run for you and for everyone at TTL. But before we let you go, who gets it done for those TTL cards? Uh, yeah, it's been a good couple of weeks for me. But uh, yep, just like to thank TTL Esports as always. Uh, we've got a great team working with uh, everyone here. Uh, along with our main supporter being Simworks. Big thank you to them. And uh, tie Designs now under graphics. There he is, Lewis Hewitt, Hewitt rounding out the podium positions tonight and the last driver that we're going to have a chat with. And Chase... Now, 20 minutes ago, 20, 30 minutes ago, you know, we were going into the main event and we were thinking, wow, it looks like Alex Bergeron might finally be in to have a bad night. James Edens might be making up some championship situations. Maybe Heilman, maybe these other guys can. Suddenly, we're just talking about it like it's been every other week where Alex Bergeron finishes at the head of the field and he's now opened up a 62 point advantage over James Edens and uh, David Heilman, who are now tied for second. Yeah, that's pretty incredible that we went from talking about him like that to now interviewing him here at the end of the race. So uh, Bergeron, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. And like you mentioned, man, it seems like, you know, 62 points out, it's it pretty much it seems like unless some drastic happens that it's a battle for the second spot right now. As you mentioned, James Eden and David Heilman are tied at 346. And only 13 points back is the guy that came from 18th up to 4th tonight, Joel Berkeley. So um, the battle for second in the championship is really, really tight. And, uh, man, if Bergeron has a bad night like we thought it was going to happen tonight, then these guys might be able to uh, get back into it. But right now, Bergeron is almost unstoppable. Yep, that is the main thing. It is, of course, important to remember that for Alex, if he has one bad night of racing, let's say he gets into a couple incidents in a heat and an LCQ and misses out on the main event, that's going to bring that point situation right up because the LCQ does not pay out points. So it's just about close enough to keep that interesting. I think regardless, that is going to do it for us here tonight on Race Spot TV and the iRacing Esports Network. We need to thank everyone who makes this series possible. Our thanks go out, of course, to the World of Outlaws and, of course, NOS Energy Drink for making this possible and for bumping this championship prize pool up to $25,000 and really giving these guys a little bit extra to run for. Alex Horn for helping us out with the TV cameras and Hugo Louis pushing all the buttons. And of course, Dirt Vision as well for making all of this possible as well. We will be back next week as this championship rolls to Indiana at Kokomo, one of the most iconic quarter mile bull rings in the United States. A lot of great racing happens at that racetrack, but there's of course a lot more action coming at you on the iRacing Esports Network this week. We have the eNASCAR Peak Indy Freeze iRacing Series. They roll into Talladega tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to uh, check in and watch that. And on Saturday, the second round of the Porsche Esports Super Cup pulls into mid-Ohio. We saw a fantastic race at Barber Motorsports Park. I think the fight will be even more fun at mid-Ohio with that long back straightaway exiting the keyhole. But from everyone here at RaceBot TV and the iRacing Esports Network, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you all next time. Bye-bye.